Hi everyone, welcome to this demo of the OCI Compute Server. Uh, in this demo, we will quickly look at the various capabilities supported by the OCI Compute Service. So let's quickly jump to the console. As you have seen in the previous uh, modules, we have uh, we were running uh, a few compute instances around a web server, around a bastion host, a database, etc. in the previous module. So the first thing, as you recall from the virtual cloud network um, lecture, is um, a compute instance needs a VCN uh, and a subnet in order to be instantiated. It needs a subnet where you would run uh, the the compute instance. So if you recall from the previous lecture, we were using this uh, demo VCN. And within the demo VCN, we had two subnets, subnet A and subnet B. If I click on subnet A, you can see it's a public subnet. Uh, and that's good enough. I'm going to use this to uh, create a compute instance. So I click on uh, instance and then I click on the create instance here, right? It gives me a default name uh, and I, I'm going to uh, call this as my uh, my instance. And then right here, I can change the image source. So I can see the various images which are supported, uh, Ubuntu, CentOS, Oracle Linux, uh, Windows Server, etc. There are also a bunch of Oracle apps images, so JD Edwards, PeopleSoft, uh, uh, and few, right? Uh, where you don't really have to do all the work. These images have been pre-provisioned uh, and you can use them. These are blank templates. Think about them as, as, as blank templates, which you could use uh, for example, to create a JDE environment. And there are also partner images, which our partners have um, published. So all the way from GitLab to uh, Fortinet, uh, et cetera, et cetera, those, uh, those images you, you could find here. And then there are things around custom images, et cetera, which we will discuss in subsequent lectures. So let me just cancel it. Oracle Linux 7 is fine. I'm in a multi-AD region. So I have multiple ADs listed here. If you are in a single AD region, you'll just have one AD listed here. Uh, I get a choice between virtual machines and bare metal. So if I click on bare metal and change the shapes, the shapes we were talking about in the previous module, you can see here. So there's a standard 52 core shape, EM, AMD shape, uh, a dense IO shape, etc. Uh, I'm going to spin up a VM. Um, and right here, if you can see, you can change the VM shapes. So that's uh, that's possible as well. Now, um, uh, as you recall, uh, right here, it's uh, the console is asking me for the service is asking me for a virtual cloud network. So I'm in the training compartment. I'm going to choose my VCN, and right here it says um, what kind of subnet I'm planning to use. I'm going to use a public subnet. So that's subnet A, which I choose here. And now it says do not assign a public IP or assign a public IP. I'll assign a public IP address. And there are a bunch of advanced scenarios here. So I'm going to skip these. We'll talk about this later on. And right here is a public private uh, RSA key pair. I have to, I have to paste the, 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 the public file, the public part of my, my key. So how do I generate it? Because folks who are new to the cloud, sometimes uh, they, you know, they kind of stuck, get stuck here. I'm using my um, Windows subsystem for Linux machine. If you're on a, on a PC, uh, and you're using um, Git or you're using, you are on a Mac, uh, you would use similar commands, uh, Git bash, but um, this is a Windows subsystem for Linux, so it makes life a little bit easier. I'm on a Windows 10 machine. So the easiest way to generate um, an RSA private public key pair is by running this SSA keygen command. I could have specified uh, parameters like the algorithm I want to use. Uh, I could specify the key length. 2048 is the minimum, but I could go, go to 4096, all that. But the simplest way is to just run the command ssh dash keygen. As you can see here, it's saying that it wants to generate a public private RSA key pair. It's asking for a location. The location is fine. Um, don't want to, you can change it if you want. Uh, and then it says it already exists. Should I overwrite? So yes, is fine. And then it's asking for a passphrase. Passphrase is a second layer of protection. So if you your keys get compromised, someone would need the passphrase in order to use them. Uh, the downside is every time you use your key pair, you would also need to provide your passphrase. So you'll have to remember it. In this case, it's a demo. So I'm just going to skip it. And my keys are generated. Uh, if I go to my directory here, I can see 
uh, my uh, private and public keys, right? So ID underscore RSA is my private key and uh, ID underscore RSA dot pub is my public key. So let me just get the public portion of the key and just copy this one. And I need to provide this value right here in my SSH window, the public portion of my SSH keys, right? And then there are a bunch of advanced options here. We're just going to skip all this. We'll talk about these subsequently in, in other modules, right? And I'll click on create instance. Now, within a few seconds, my instance would be up and running. And as the instance uh, comes up, it's a public instance, it's as a public IP. Uh, and if you recall from the virtual cloud network, um, um, demo and, and the modules uh, port 22 uh, is open so i can ssh into this instance if those cases if those things were not true you would have to go and open specific ports like port 22 in, in this case in order to do ssh as the instance is coming up uh, let me just scroll down you can see the the progress here uh, you can also see things like matrix if i click on that uh, matrix are still not available because it's coming up but you can see the attached vnic and there you see the, the VNIC has been attached and this is the public IP I get. So if the instance is up and running, looks like it's still provisioning, I can SSH into that. So we'll do that. There's also boot volume. We'll talk about boot volume in the next uh, uh, module um, and there are other, some other capabilities which are there. So right now it says running. So let me just clear my screen and if you recall, uh, the user ID for uh, Oracle Linux is um, OPC. Let me just make sure that I'm using the the correct IP address. 138 seems like the correct IP address. And if I if I hit enter, it says, "Do you want to connect to this um, machine?" Say yes. And and right now you can see that I'm inside my instance. Right, I'm SSH into my my instance. So this is a quick demo of how you can spin up a virtual machine within few seconds, literally 15, 20 seconds, I was able to bring it up. Now, let me show you a couple of other things really quickly. So I also have a dedicated virtual machine host uh, created. Now to create one, you could just come here and with single click, you could create a dedicated virtual um, machine host. Now on this host, I can go ahead and create, uh, create VMs now, right? This is where, um, my host is dedicated to me, but I get a choice to create VM. So if I click here, same experience as before, default name is fine, um, Oracle Linux is fine, virtual machine shapes. Now I could pick a bigger shape, right? I could uh, say I want to spin up, let's say an eight core machine uh, or a four core machine. Uh, let's say eight core is fine. Eight core machine, select shape. And then right here, all the stuff is similar to what we had earlier, the Movician, I want to, spin this up and submit a assign a public ip why not and ssh keys i believe i still have it copied no, sorry i don't I removed it so i'll have to go back and let me just copy my ssh the public portion of my ssh key provide it here and then right here you can see this is my dedicated virtual host right and i can click create and now what it would do is it would create uh, this uh, compute uh, this virtual machine the eight core machine i just just uh, spun up uh, on to my dedicated host the dedic the host which is just dedicated to me so this is the second flavor which you could use with the the compute instance the third one is of course the bare metal machine now let me just quickly go ahead here and create a bare metal machine it takes literally a few minutes for to come up but i could still just show you the experience so i come here it's the same experience as a vm i would just pick a bare metal machine and uh, right now it says gives me a choice of a 52 core standard machine and that's fine rest everything is the same same experience i can just pick a demo vcn um, i can pick the subnet a assign a public ip i have my ssh keys i just copied in the previous step so i have it there and right there, I go and create my, my bare metal machine. Now, this would take a couple of minutes, but a couple of minutes you would see that my uh, bare metal machine is up and running. So this was a quick uh, demo uh, where we 
showed uh, creating a VM. Uh, we show we we showed creating a dedicated virtual machine host, and then we created a VM on top of that. And then finally, we showed you how similar the experience is to create a bare metal machine. So hopefully, it gives you a good quick um, idea of how the compute um, service works at a very high level. In the next few modules, we'll dive deeper into uh, specific things around advanced networking, uh, around choosing fault domains, around custom images, boot volumes, etc. Thank you for watching this demo. If you have time, please join the next module on the compute service. Thank you.